and there, counter, um, by counterposing the government's participated project with the notion of autonomy held in San Juan del Bosque and how the former is problematized by the latter. My first point centers on the autonomous spaces developed by the residents of San Juan del Bosque, which can be divided in one, the territory and resources, and second, the organizational, their organizational structure. Around the year of 2000, residents from these and other two adjacent neighborhoods got resources and labor together to build their own water system because the government will not build it for them. To this day, they get water from the spring in a community of the mountain named El Pinar instead of the official water distributor. The, pre the president of the neighborhood tells me, quote, they bought water and electricity on their own. They carried the light post themselves. Back in the day, they wouldn't give us anything. But after the 94 rebellion, they brought light and sewage, and people were happy. End quote. Since 94, the local government has paid more attention to, indi to the indigenous periphery and their demands, providing electricity and paving in some streets. But even before 94, the community of San Juan del Bosque had their own system of communities, consisting of the following ones. Water system, streets, oh, sorry. Water system, streets, elementary school, kindergarten, graveyard, security, and a judge in charge of conflict resolution. These positions are obligatory for a year, with five years of rest in between. The people also paid a system of quotas that help in running their schools, as well as fund urgent public works needed at different places in the neighborhood. This form of organization reminds me of what Gustavo Esteva has called the new commons, which he describes as spaces that allow people to live in their own terms. To a certain extent, the community of San Juan del Bosque has developed an autonomous sphere that allows them to organize in ways reminiscent of the rural communities they come from. Gustavo Esteva defines autonomy as, quote, the ability of peoples to dispose freely of their own political and jurisdictional spaces in order to practice their own way of life and government. In San Juan del Bosque, this autonomy is evident in the distance from and conditioning to the government's influence in their physical spaces. For example, they do not allow the police to come into their neighborhood, and their social organization renders the government methods and ends as secondary to their own. An example of this is the National Crusade Against Hunger. My second point talks about the way participation is used by the National Crusade Against Hunger. Participation has a very important role in the implementation of this federal program. The first stage of the crusade was the formation of community committees in every neighborhood in order to educate people about the government strategy and coordinate actions with them. It will be through these committees that the community will articulate their needs and priorities to the government, who in turn will coordinate departments and programs to channel the necessary resources and funding. However, it is important to look at how the concept of participation can be used as a means of governance and the exercise of power. Gabriela Barajas has described social programs in Mexico as useful for, quote, generating popular support for the president and dealing with potentially conflicted political or social zones, end quote. As for the participated methodology, Majid Ranima defines participation as a tool used by the government to make development programs more efficient and cheap. He says, quote, the political function of participation was to empower the, the voiceless and the powerless and also eventually create a bridge between the establishment and its target population." End quote. Thus, we can see that the objective is creating a network between the government apparatus and civil society that presents a plan beneficiaries are supposed to join under the appearance of democratic and free participation. However, as I spoke with many residents of San Juan del Bosque, the government proposals for participation weren't taken, at, weren't taken as at face value, but directly linked with politicians' intents to generate popular support. One of the oldest residents of the neighborhood told, quote, their government officials come to tell us, we want to support you, but I personally think that they only come before elections, and we get together and say, okay, we will support them, and then our authorities go to ask for something they won't provide, end quote. As a person who has been born and raised in Mexico, I can assure you that this situation in which politicians 
show off to make promises, only to make promises, is a typical one. And in the very same way, the National Crusade Against Hunger, what people call, quote, the star program of the president, is perceived by these residents as another proposal with promises to be skeptical about. It has been precisely because of this negligence and past discrimination that the people have invested their energy in caring for and participating in their own system of communities. They have also They have also decimated that the neighborhood president takes care of any issues concerning the government. This was evident when I asked for details about the crusade. Most of the residents didn't really know what it was, even after the General Assembly, including the actual crusade committee members. They were designated, as the president said, quote, to avoid internal conflicts. The community had already agreed that government issues are handled by the president, end quote. Thus, although the social workers were able to form a committee, they couldn't ask for more involvement lest they violated community agreements. Their proposal then turns into the same instrumental tool, initially introduced by the government, now serving as a tactic for the neighborhood to use for their own means. Michel de Sorto defines tactic as that deployed by those who act from below, who are subjected to what he calls the strategy, designed by the institution, ruler, policymaker, or power agent. But in Sorto's view, the tactic is a way in which ordinary people navigate and impose hegemonic model or strategy. Particularly, talking about the Spanish colonization process in Mexico, the Sorto asserts that, quote, the indigenous remain other within the system which they assimilated and which assimilated externally. Procedures of consumption maintain their difference in the very space that the occupier was organizing, end quote. In this way, the level of participation in the government services and projects is determined and decided by the people, and they chose to participate on their own terms if they see they might get something out of it. In conclusion, there are several problems that the story, like the one in San Juan del Bosque, poses to a national development project such as the crusade against hunger. It is not simply a matter of using a better methodology or making an exception to make it work. It is a question of what kind of government can work best in a multicultural country that for past decades used public policy to assimilate, homogenize, and control the population that was frequently on the verge of protest. Although having a feeling of distrust of and reservations with fully complying with government practices, San Juan del Bosque does, in the end, participate in programs such as the, as the Crusade Against Hunger, hoping that for once, the government will indeed deliver its promises. Perhaps then, the middle ground held by this community represents a form of counter-hegemony that is politically ambiguous in appearance, is a, but in reality is a tactic for survival accompanied by the consciousness to achieve a degree of self-determination.